Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Heather Lewis and today we're gonna to be making over this dresser and nightstand set that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for free. Deals like this go pretty fast, so when I saw it, I messaged the person right away and I was like, I can come pick up today, I can come pick up tomorrow, I'll even offer you $20 to hold it and I'll just come get it. There was one other person in front of me, so she told me I had to wait on them and they ended up no-showing, which meant I was the one that was able to go pick this one up, which I'm so happy about because these are really good quality pieces. In fact, these are probably the makeovers that I desire most just because of how they're built, they're solid wood, they're really nice structurally, and people pay big bucks for these once they're made over. Before we get too far into this video, if you guys could please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below, it would really mean the world to me. Really commenting, sharing this video, turning on your post notifications, any type of interaction that you can give me in this video is really going to help this channel out. I have a goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I may actually be able to reach that with the help of you guys. So thank you guys so much for all of the support. Before I get ahead of myself, I wanna talk a little bit about these pieces. There are a few things that are leading me to want to make over these pieces. First being the hardware. I'm not a big fan of this original hardware and I think changing them out to something more modern could really help the look of these pieces and make them more desirable. Another thing is their current bases. I don't like all of the curves and the round edges. When I'm looking for furniture, I'm looking for the clean lines and actually the sharp edges. So I definitely wanna change out these bases into something more like that. Both the dresser and the nightstand do have some wear and tear. There are also a lot of kind of gouges out of some of the drawers. There is some decorative hardware on the dresser that I definitely don't want to keep. I'd like to be able to take that off and, and fill in those holes. I just don't think they're necessary and I wanna keep it super simple and super clean. Another major thing, which if you've watched my videos before, you would know that I simply just don't love the brown and orangey color that a lot of these older dressers have. I like to change it to more of a neutral color, not only because that's what I like, but that's what a lot of people like nowadays as well. So it makes it really easy to sell. Now, of course, like most of these older dressers, these pieces are solid wood, super nice quality, heavy, and have a lot more life to live they're just not very cute right now. So that's why we're gonna give them a makeover. I'm gonna start by taking off the hardware and then Avery's actually here, so he's gonna help me drill in some new hardware holes. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. So Avery's gonna go ahead and help me get the new hardware holes drilled, but right after we're done with that, I need to go ahead and clean these pieces down. They're pretty dusty, dirty, and grimy, especially under where the hardware used to lay. People rarely take off the hardware and clean under there, if ever, so I need to make sure to go ahead and do that soon. So the hardware that I'm gonna be using for this piece is this modern bar hardware that I get off of Amazon. It's actually a really good deal. I'll leave a link to it in my description box down below in case you guys wanna try it out for yourselves but it's really nice. And this is one of the biggest parts that make this makeover look like a new modern piece of furniture. Anytime I need hardware holes drilled, Avery is my guy. It's not that I can't figure out how to drill new hardware holes in myself because I definitely could and I have before, but Avery has a lot more experience in it and he's a lot more accurate with all of his measurements than I am. When I'm trying to flip these pieces for profit, I get really stressed out and if I mess up, I know I could fill in the hardware holes if I were to, but it's just a lot easier if it's done right the first time and Avery's always the one to get it done right. Plus, if I make a mistake too close to where the correct hole needs to be drilled, it could lead to bigger problems because the screw may not hold. So when he's around and willing, I'll just let him do the hardware holes because it's a lot less stressful and I'm confident that it's going to get done in the end. As he was finishing up the last drawer, I started to take them all out of the body of the dresser because the next thing that I'm going to have Avery help me with is building a new base. 
We don't do this for every makeover, but we do it quite often because it really does elevate the piece for not too much money. I always help in the base building process, but Avery really does take the lead here as well because like I said, my measurements aren't great and it definitely needs some work. It is something that I am working on, but I just want it done right since I am going to sell this piece. The first thing you have to do to build a new base is to remove the old one. I've seen this process done so many times by Avery that I know it like the back of my hand, and this specific dresser was by all means not an easy one. A lot of the time you can just unscrew all of the screws and you'll have a flat even surface to put a new base on, but in this case he actually had to make some really difficult and long cuts that needed to be straight with a very limited tool supply. He went with this old jigsaw that I got from my grandpa after he passed away and the cuts weren't perfect, I'll be honest in that, but it's definitely the best that he could have done since this dresser was so difficult and the only thing that matters is that it's flat enough that the new base will be able to be screwed on, so it worked out. The second part to the base building process is actually cutting down the wood and building it. We use a miter saw to cut all the wood and then we use a Craig Jag kit to drill pocket hole screws which will hold the base together and hold it to the dresser itself. I originally got this base building technique from DIY Wife's channel. If you haven't checked her video out on the process of learning how to build this base, you definitely should do that. Since then, me and Avery have made a few tweaks to how we like our base build and how we like the finish of the base to look. So we may make a video on the base building process eventually if that's something that you guys are interested in. Make sure to comment that below whether you guys are or not so that I know if it would be a good video idea for you guys to watch because I do know as I've posted some of these makeovers that had the base in it you guys were interested then so just let me know in the comments below it's now the next day and at this point we did get the base built on the dresser here we didn't quite get it built on the nightstand yet and I think this video is mostly gonna focus on just the dresser makeover this week has been really busy because we have a lot going on and I will explain that to you later but for now I I want to keep going on this dresser and the next thing that needs to get done is getting this piece cleaned. Every time that I clean, I use this white bucket with warm water and Dawn dish soap. It's a really good degreaser and it really helps cut any dirt or grime. So I'm going to go ahead and get this filled up and we're going to start cleaning this piece down. Dawn dish soap seems to be a staple in most people's homes, so I like to use that just to show that not everything has to be so hard in the furniture flipping world, and a lot of things you use to flip furniture you probably already have. Recently I got a comment saying that I should really clean my pieces before moving on to anything else, and I completely agree because I have been doing that. If you look at some of my later videos, I'll show the footage of that. I just haven't really been showing me cleaning my pieces recently because it is a pretty boring process and I felt like you viewers didn't really care to see it. But any dirt or grime that is left behind when you go to paint will actually show right through that paint which is something you definitely don't want because then at that point you're practically starting over. It's better to just do it right the first time than to cut corners and have to go back later. So my question is do you prefer that I show this footage of me cleaning down these pieces or or would you rather me skip the filming part of this because it is boring, but then make sure to mention it because it is so important and it's really not something that you guys should be skipping out on. And I definitely don't want it to appear like I'm doing that as well. Now I think while I'm cleaning these drawers, I'm gonna work on getting that middle decorative piece off here. It's really not that hard. It's really only held on by these two little pieces, so I can just get a flathead screwdriver and pull them up and then these should come off.
So cleaning this piece only took four of these towels, which is actually pretty good. This piece really wasn't too dirty, but now it's clean and it's good to move forward. I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is fill in these old hardware holes. There's also a few imperfections on the drawer fronts as well as the dresser itself. This base was a more difficult base to build because of how this dresser is made. I've gotta use some wood filler to fill in some gaps, which is totally fine. It'll look really good in the end. Typically I would use Drydex spackling, but because I just ran out, I'm gonna use this Minwax color matched wood filler. Right here on the bottle it says that it accepts paint as well, and we are gonna be painting this piece, so this should work just fine. drawer fronts are dry the dresser and the base where I put the wood filler that's not quite dry yet so I'm gonna go ahead and do these now sometimes when you do wood filler you need two coats and that is definitely the case this time you can see that it's sinking in a little bit and it's just not gonna be flush once the paint goes on so I'm gonna go ahead get these sanded down and then repeat this process hopefully just one more time for sanding I'm gonna be using my respirator and I'm gonna go ahead and and sand this down with my circular sander. I should just only need like a 200 grit and that'll be just fine. We got a whole nother round of this, so let's get going.
another day. Today we are ready to start painting on this dresser and it's a hot day today. It's about 100 degrees so that's definitely not great painting weather but we're gonna make it work and make it happen. In one of my recent videos, the Pottery Barn video, I got a lot of comments saying that I should check out Black Sheep House because she was the original creator of that faux wood look design and I hadn't come across her channel yet at that point so I was definitely intrigued definitely interested and I looked at her channel and I saw all these great videos on that faux wood look design as I was looking at those videos I was looking at some of her other videos as well and she has this really cool technique on how to hand and roll paint a piece of furniture without any brush strokes at all and I was really interested in this because obviously all I do is I hand paint. I don't do any spraying finishes and a lot of the time, most of the time when I'm hand painting, I get those hand painted brush strokes. But it would be really cool to get a flawless finish while still using either a paintbrush or a roller or both. So I'm gonna use her video to try to get a flawless, no brush stroke, no streak finish. The paint that she used was HGTV homed by Sherwin-Williams of Ovation Plus interior paint and primer. And I'm gonna be using the color Caviar. I just want a deep black color and this is that. She said that this paint works really well with her technique. So I'm gonna try to just follow that through step by step. And then she also used a brush, not this brush specifically, but this is one of my favorite brushes. It's the Valspar Wall and Trim Brush and I just think it works really well. And it's not too expensive, I think it's just over six dollars and then I also picked up a roller because we're gonna be doing kind of a combination of painting and rolling now one thing that my grandma taught me and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about is to actually line this with either plastic wrap or aluminum foil and that's gonna allow you to use it over and over and over again plus when you're done, you just wrap it up and you throw it away and it makes for such easy cleanup. All right, so before I pour the paint, I'm gonna watch this through one more time just so that I know that I'm gonna be doing it right. Your secret ingredient is the Ovation Plus paint. I found this on accident. I've been so crazy about this paint. I don't know what they put in it. Okay, yeah, so we got the right paint here. So first things first, I go on with just a brush. This is a, a little stiffer bristled brush so I can get into the nooks and crannies and I wanna just apply the paint as evenly as possible. Then you're gonna go over it with a foam roller. This is the key to getting the smooth finish, the sprayed look finish. You can see up close, I really wanted to show you guys like in depth because many of you have watched my other videos where I paint furniture black and I don't think I zoomed in enough. So here it is up close, I wanna show you guys like up close of it dry. See, you can see all those imperfections from the hardware, but you can't see the imperfections in the paint, right? And then up top it's still drying, so it kind of looks like textured when it's still drying, but once it dries, it looks pretty smooth. Okay, yeah, so we got the right paint here, and then we start with the brush, and after the brush, we go right back through with the roller. We never stick the roller in the paint, it's just to even everything out. Seems simple enough. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. This is a big top here though, and like I said, it's pretty warm out today, so this paint's gonna dry on me pretty quick, so I'm definitely gonna work in small sections, especially on the top, but I think this should turn out good, so let's get started.
Right away when I started using that roller, I could tell that all of the painted brush strokes were just being eliminated. I will say I've always been super impressed with how Sharon Williams paint dries and I think that definitely plays a factor in this no streak flawless finish. After actually painting this dresser, I did go back and I looked at the can of paint that I was using and it did say that Sherwin-Williams recommends using a roller and I think that's why the finish ends up looking so good. Here it's partially dry, it's not completely dry yet, but you can just tell there's almost no like brush strokes or roller marks and it's looking really great. I continued to do this on all of the drawer fronts as well. I honestly could have probably gotten away with just doing one coat of paint throughout both the body and the drawer fronts, but I kind of have this rule where I always do a two coat minimum just because I am selling these pieces and I want to make sure that it is perfect for any potential buyers. With it being 100 degrees out and it just being super hot, this paint was drying quick and I was able to work with it quick enough so it all worked out just fine. But after it had fully dried, look at this finish. Literally, I see nothing. No brush strokes, no roller marks, nothing. I am absolutely obsessed with this technique. This is something I'm definitely going to be using in the future. Like I said, I do think that the paint that I used really does play a part in this, but it's looking so good. I went on to doing the second coat, and after the second coat, I was ready for top coat. Shannon with Black Sheep House has a method and technique that she really likes with putting on her top coat, but I have a method that I really like and I'm just going to stick with that where I use my polyurethane and cut up a little section of this grout sponge and just apply it that way. It has always had a flawless finish when I've done it like that, so I'm going to continue my way for the top coat. I'm not going to do it in this video because I have so many other videos showing this, so if you want I will leave a video up here that you can go ahead and check out. Aside from getting the top coat on I just had to put the new hardware on since we had drilled in the new hardware holes early on in this video if you guys like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe any interaction will help us reach that 10,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year thank you guys so much for watching and let's get into that final reveal Crazy like no